Hey, and welcome to today's episode where I'm here with Alison Small. How are you, Alison? I'm well, thank you. It's awesome to have you here. So, Alison, you are the founder of Edge Training Academy, and you have also had over 25 years experience um, in the business finance world. So, it's awesome to have you here, and I'm really looking forward to diving into some of your experiences and what you've been up to lately in your business as well. So, for those um, who are just coming across you for the first time, uh, it'd be awesome if you could share a little bit around who you are and who you help. So, thank you for having me, first of all. I just help non-financial managers, usually in the corporate sector. Uh, So sometimes you'll find managers get promoted uh, to a role because they're fantastic at what they do. Mm. And now they're expected to be able to read and understand financial statements, have to budget and analyse things. And I found that there's such a big skills gap in that area. And it's not their fault. Uh, It's not a, uh, it's it's not something that they ever wanted to do. Otherwise, they would have done finance and accounting. But they found them themselves thrown into this deep end, and it, it's just I help these people to understand the basics, and it really uh, improves them in their role, makes them much more uh, promotable for their future and also helps the organization's bottom line. Yeah, awesome. And I can imagine, you know, for a lot of people who are really great technically at what they do, you know, they have that really good technical skill set. And then, you know, when you're stepping up into a, a management role, you know, we see this a lot in the corporate space. There's a whole new skill set you have to learn, whether it be leadership, whether it be, you know, finance, like you said, around reading budgets in order to perform in that new role as well. Um, what kind of impact does it have for them, like as an organization, if they managers are a little bit more up to speed when it comes to the finances and that side of their role? Yeah, well, it has a huge impact both for the person individually and for the organisation as a whole, because uh, I guess if you can understand that every single decision a manager makes does have financial implications. So it could be hiring or firing personnel. It could be just sending an invoice off for payment. It could be a new marketing uh, proposal they want to put forward. Mm. Everything has financial implications. So I found that managers that know how to read and understand financial statements really have an easier time being able to um, do their whole role, really. And yeah. for, for an organisation, well, it's all about the bottom line, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So every dollar they can save, it's going to help the bottom line for the organisation. Yeah, absolutely. And how do you go, I guess, for me, I consider myself maybe not to be so much of a financial minded person. It's, it's definitely a learnt skill that you can you can learn. So how do you find with some of the people that you're you're working with when it comes to sort of learning finances for the first time? What's what's some of their experiences if they don't really consider themselves to be, you know, really like an accounting or financial kind of person? As you mentioned, they might have gone into that role if they were that way inclined. So how do you find that, you know, transition and and really helping them to upskill them in that area? What I have found is that um, you just need to break it down Mm. and you you really need to make it easy to understand. So that's the backbone of my course. I have uh, developed, it's called the EDGE method, and it breaks it down into four modules. And these people, they don't need to know what accountants know but they need to be able to understand the jargon, uh, the terminologies that are used. So I try and put everything into plain English and um, not use all the jargon and terminologies or really explain what it means. Mm. Because in finance, you know, you can have um, one concept and it can be called five different things. And that in itself is just confusing. Mm -hmm. So I've worked out a way that um, with my course, I want it to be easy to understand for anybody and um, it'll just really bring them up to speed and they'll, you know, a lot of people, they'll pop into a manager's meeting, you know, they've just been promoted and then they're all excited and then it comes round to talking about the organization's finances and they sort of sit there and go, oh, I hope I don't get asked a question. Mm -hmm. So it really gives them a lot of confidence that they can now go and sit in these meetings, they understand what's going on and they can contribute. 
Mm, Yeah, that's awesome. And you are financially inclined as a person. We know this um, because of the work that you're doing. So I'd love to hear a little bit about your story, Alison, and sort of how you got started with the work that you're doing now. And and how was that, I guess, sort of transition for you in terms of starting the the business with Edge Training Academy? And and what was that journey like for you in the beginning? Yeah, well, it was a long time ago now, but I remember leaving school. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I didn't want to go to uni. I just wanted to be adulting, as I call it. <laughs> so I had a job for a couple of years and then I did the traveled through Europe and um, Asia and a lot of places, spent a year traveling and came home and went, right, now I have to do something. I was okay at maths at school, so maybe I'll do accounting. And that was literally how I fell into it. (laughs) Then I got into the corporate sector. So I sort of went from um, assistant accountant to company accountant to project accounting. And once I hit project accounting, I went, this is really interesting. Then I moved on and had my favourite job ever, still to this day. It was with a project uh, management company. Mm. And I was the head project accountant and financial analyst. Mm -hmm. And we laid fiber optic cable between Alaska and Portland, Oregon. So I went submarine. Yeah, it was so interesting. It was fantastic. I used to have to go to Alaska about four times a year, which is so so difficult. What a drag. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Loved Alaska. Yep. Uh, Then I had to do a lot of training. Mm -hmm. in that role. And it was there that I really realized, hey, you know, I I love this training part. Mm. So that's probably where my love of training came from. Yep. Um, Fast forward, I guess, uh, my husband and I, we we finished the project on time under budget. Yeah. And we just got married and we wanted to do a sea change. And we had a few small businesses. I also did a lot of training for some other small businesses. I set up some accounting systems. So I trained them in that. Mm -hmm. And more recently, I've been a business broker. Yep. So I have looked at hundreds, maybe thousands of financial statements. Mm. And I just had this aha moment one day when I went, it's everywhere. This skill Mm. set gap is everywhere. It's in corporate, it's in small business, Mm -hmm. people that have amazing businesses, but they're failing. And it's purely because they don't understand the the fundamentals of finance. Mm -hmm. So, that's where I thought, you know what, I'll put my uh, accounting skills together with yep. my passion for training. And that's how Edge Training Academy came about. Fantastic. And what was that moment like when you decided to really launch the business and, and go, you know, right, this is the direction for me moving forward? What was that moment yeah. like for you? Well, I knew I wanted to do it, but I didn't know how to do it. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know what, well, I knew how to set up a business. That was no problem. But the rest of it, I knew I needed help. So that's where I came across you. And um, I've just found your program fantastic. It's really, really helped me. Um, The LinkedIn, I had a LinkedIn profile, but it sort of, I just accepted anybody and everybody from wherever around the world. And I did nothing with it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Then it sat dormant for years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, really understanding the power of LinkedIn and what it could do for my business. Yeah. And then following your program and the steps and um, how easy it was to follow the program Mm -hmm. has just uh, really transformed the business. Yeah, awesome. And what what have you found has been the biggest impact for you, you know, on the business? If you think back to when you had your dormant LinkedIn profile to now where, you know, you're thriving, you're sharing content on the platform, what what do you think has been sort of the biggest impact for your business? Well, um, we all need clients, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. So I found it the best way to find um, potential clients, Mm -hmm. Uh, but I really... I really like the way it's done. I'm not a salesy person. Yeah. And I don't like it being done to me. You can mm-hmm. see it and a mile off, you yeah. know. 
This yep. person's just out for something. So I think your method um, that really resonated with me, just that nice, warm connection, let's have some conversations, can I help you? Mm. You know, if I can't help you, that's fine. I, I have yeah. no problem. But if yep. you too see this problem, mm. um, I can help. Uh and it's just made an amazing difference. I'm having conversations with people that I probably would never have had. Yeah, that's so awesome. Really awesome to hear. And, you know, there's so much on the the platform. And I know, you know, content was a, a thing for you as well to really sort of <laughs> step out from behind the, the LinkedIn lurking shadows, as I like to call it which is super normal, right? I went through the same thing when I sort of left my corporate role and started in my own business. And, you know, many of our clients have similar experiences where, you know, you you can just have a profile that sits there and does nothing, or you actually have to become a little bit more active on the platform and start to share your thoughts and ideas and experiences. So, you know, having now shared some content and, and had some engagement come through on the platform from your network, what's that been experience been like for you as well? Oh, it's exciting. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. You feel like, well, um, to me, uh, having people come back and say, hey, yeah, you know, this is a real problem. I mm -hmm. see it all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, that's given me some extra confidence as well. Yeah. And then having people um, want to have a chat about it. It's, uh, it's, it's great. It just feels wonderful. Yeah, awesome. And what are you most excited about in the business moving forward? Like now that you've had that really good feedback, you know, you, you're starting to put the, the business out there and I know you're having some really good conversations. So where do you see the business in the next sort of 12 months from now? If we were having the same conversation, Alison, what are you most excited about? Well, I feel like 2024 will be my year of doing. Mm -hmm. I feel like this year was the year of preparation. Yeah. And getting, you know, all the ducks in a row and getting my programs together, um, you know, getting your programs together is kind of the easy part. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of it is a bit more difficult, but I feel like um, that's really coming together. These conversations are turning into um, real leads. It looks like there'll be a couple of firm committals yeah. Um, I'll be far too busy to do a lot of the jobs I'm doing now. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll have a host of VAs working for me. I have yeah. one at the moment and that's, yeah. that is really, um, you're right when you said it's one of the best things you can do because mm -hmm. it's allowed me to work on things that I need to work on yeah. Um, and not the sort of simple stuff that still mm -hmm. needs to be done. Yeah. So, yeah, 2024 looks exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think I love that you've, you know, put on a, a VA, probably, you know, a lot of us put on someone in the business before we feel really ready for it. And I think that's the most important step you can take is that, you know, once you've got that help in there, like you said, you can focus on those higher level opportunities, those higher level tasks. Um, but, you know, the admin and the day to day and all of, all of the rest of it still needs to happen, you know, with someone, either we have to automate it or someone has to do it for us if it's not us. So I think that was a, a huge step in the right direction for you in the business as well. And um, yeah. really exciting that you've got, you know, um, that leverage now to actually do the training and things that you're really passionate about. Yeah, because I think you don't realise how many little things there are to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's yeah. thousands. So if you can just take a few of those jobs off the plate, um, yeah. You can, yeah, really focus on what what you should be focusing on. Yeah. And did your thoughts about it change, I guess, when you brought on that virtual assistant? Because I know for some people that, you know, we work with or that we speak to, you know, there, there's a cost involved, obviously, financially to, to bring someone on into the business. And so how have you found that in terms of just the, the cost versus time savings for you and just getting that balance? Did you sort of go through a bit of a decision making process around that for your business? I'd love to hear your experiences. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, you've got to keep all your costs down. Mm. So um, I I just I sat back and I sort of had a good think about it. And I thought I'll give it a go just for a few hours a week. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're not on any fixed contract term. So yep. I thought, let me just give it a go and see. And as soon as she started, uh, I knew it was the right thing to do. And it was 100% worth the investment. Even, um, you know, I was setting up a sales funnel. I have no idea, absolutely yep. no idea about that. And I really don't want to. 
mm-hmm. either. It's mm-hmm. not something I need to be an expert at. Yeah. And um, she is. Yep. So she went in and she set it up and um, that that alone saved me, you know, a month. Yeah, totally. So it's it enables you to get into the um, generating clients mm-hmm, mm-hmm. quicker. Yeah. A lot quicker. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And like you said, there's so many moving parts to a coaching or consulting business. You can very easily, you know, get pulled in all different directions in the business. And then I think, you know, what grows any business is new clients and getting to work with new clients. And that's actually the work that we really enjoy doing um, is being working with clients and seeing them to thrive as well. So the more we can do that, the more we actually, I find, you know, really start to enjoy the business too. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, And so what would you say to someone who was like maybe in your shoes a little bit when it comes to business? So they may have, you know, been making that leap out of their corporate job or maybe they've just started, they've got their first few clients and they're looking to really grow their business. Having sort of moved through a lot of those steps in terms of hiring, um, bringing on, you know, LinkedIn and getting your sales and marketing happening in the business. What would be your advice to someone who's maybe sitting there and feeling a little bit anxious or a little bit nervous about the whole thing right now? Look, I tell them just to jump in, Mm. just, you know, make the decision and jump in. Uh, Even when it comes down to, you know, I sat around thinking about doing those videos for ages and I, I had all the content ready and I just went, oh, you know what, just get over yourself, sit in front of the camera and just do your best. Mm-hmm. That's all you can do. Jump in and do your best. If it's something you really want to do, uh, you'll get better at it the more you do it, but you just have to take that step. And I think with your program, I think you genuinely <laughs> care um, your group really care about success and supporting you. I've felt supported all along the way. I don't feel like I've been left alone at all. If I've had questions or roadblocks, you know, they've been answered and just really practical. Um, I think that was the most for me. I'm quite a detailed person. So yeah. even your, you know, your LinkedIn um chats you know how to do it what to say Mm. and and in what situation for a detailed people person like me that was just awesome so um yeah the modules the whole program very practical and if anyone's on the fence just jump in yeah that's awesome well it's been uh, awesome to chat to you and just learn a little bit about your journey and, and heading into the business and for those that are listening to this who you know might have some management on their team who could do with a little bit of upskilling in terms of their finances or maybe there's someone out there who themselves has just found themselves you know in a new role and can identify that that's a bit of a theme within their team as well um where can they go to find you and and learn more about what you're doing Alison well, first in, connect on LinkedIn. <laughs> you got one. it. You passed the test. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's always and, my good question. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I also have a website, uh, edgetrainingacademy.com.au. Now, I just wanted to also put in, I did a little um, presentation to some small business owners mm. and I, you know, wasn't my corporate work. It was yeah. in focused on small business Mm -hmm. and that actually went across really well and I've had a lot of people ask me oh do you do something in small business so I've actually just created a three-hour online course yeah so if anyone has their own business and they just want to get the basics for small Mm -hmm. business yeah that's available on my website very soon (laughs) yes watch this (laughs) Yes, my VA is working that one out for me as we speak. Perfect. Well, yeah, definitely watch this space. There's lots to come from you, Alison. Um, And we love seeing your passion for the work that you do. And we love seeing your your business continue to grow as well. So it's an absolute pleasure to talk through your business journey today and to work with you too. Thank you, Amy. Thanks very much.